Students, if you're new to class, my name is Professor Lando, and today we're learning about fursonas. It's kind of in the name. Persona plus fur linguistics. What exactly is a fursona? Well, I'll tell you, this comes from Wikipedia. A fursona is a personally disclaimed persona resembling an anthropomorphic animal. Do you know what anthropomorphic is, Blake? What does I, that mean? I have no idea. Uh, anthropomorphic sounds something brutal, sounds like maybe animals that eat other animals. Some of them do. Uh. Anthropomorphic, anthro meaning man, pomorphic, change to change. So basically it's saying animals given qualities of humans, of man, mm. namely being upright, usually on two legs, having some sort of hands. You know, usually animals are on the ground like this on all fours, hunched over, you know, they, they have an animal brain run on animal instincts. They lack having a human brain. So when we say anthropomorphize, they're upright, have arms, hands, and they can think. They, they are human. They have human traits. They, they have intelligence. They can talk. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So. All right, Blake, do you know who these characters are right here? Uh... I need, I need help. Uh... These are characters from X Asterisk, the newly released real-time turn-based hybrid 3D RPG game where players can delve into the world of Alindo and embark on a wondrous interstellar adventure. Players will take on the role of the main characters of X Asterisk, Jan, V, and Manganese, tasked with unraveling the secrets of the long-lost Alindish civilization and to reveal the truth behind the astromorphs that inhabit this alien planet. In X Asterisk, players can create teams of up to three characters with different character and skill combinations. Players can also use obscuring maneuvers to parry or dodge enemy attacks. And this right here is one of the coolest things about X Asterisk because basically what this means is that unlike traditional turn-based games, you're able to make moves to dodge and parry your enemies' attacks during their turn, as well as combo moves with your allies. And additionally, to celebrate the launch of X Asterisk, Griffline invites its community to join When the Land Meets the Stars, a special X Asterisk Arknights crossover event full of fun surprises and exclusive in-game cosmetics for players. Head over to the official event page to link your account and get the crossover attire, and Arknight Doctors can get theirs at the same event page as well. Right, students, you can check out X Asterisk on the Apple and Google Play Store by clicking the link in the description. Let me know what you think, and thank you again to X Asterisk for sponsoring today's lecture. A fursona is a personally disclaimed persona resembling an anthropomorphic animal adopted by a member of the furry fandom. Fursonas can provide numerous roles for the creator, whether it be idealized versions of their adopter, fleshed out role play characters, and or digital mascot. So that was a very all-encompassing definition. So Blake, based on what I just said, what do you think that meant? What is a fursona? Got to be just a person, right? That mm -hmm. likes to just dress up maybe as their favorite animal and you know, they maybe wear suits and then they walk on all four legs if they want to. They might bark, they might bite. Uh, Hopefully. Something, something around that area. So you're, you have basically the mainstream normie uh, understanding of furries and fursonas, you imagine them putting on the costume and I guess you implied they role play to some degree yeah. as, mm -hmm. as a thing. But you know, that is, that is the surface level description of what furries might be doing. Not all of them, but what, what is at its core? The fursona, when you see someone wearing the costume, let's say a dog, well, what, what is that really? What are they projecting? What are they sending out to the public? What are they showing everyone? What at its core is this depiction that you are seeing? That is what we're getting into today. That is a fursona. Blake, what are those letters? That's Orange County, Professor. No, O-C, O-C stands for Original character. Yes, sir. Good, very good. Very good, Blake. Come on, baby. OC, original character. Very basic first steps here in understanding what a fursona is. So, original character is often tied to media fandoms, could possibly be completely original. This is a character that people within the community, artists, or perhaps you can commission an artist to draw something for you, or you can sketch something out yourself. You as an individual, 
in the fandom, mostly, create your own character that would fit generally in that media's universe. For the example of Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. You know what that is? That's Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog, one of my favorite medias. Sonic is a character within Sonic the Hedgehog, the IP of Sonic the Hedgehog. But let's say I am an individual who likes Sonic the Hedgehog and I have a desire to explore the media in a more personable way. So for me, I might create a original character, a character that is not canonical within the universe of Sonic the Hedgehog, but my own character that I put into the universe. Why don't we do this in practice, Blake? Let's you and I create an original character, an OC, Sonic OC, right now as a live demonstration. So, um, what do you know about Sonic? So I know Sonic, he's quick, he's fast, he's blue, he's got a buddy named Tails. Very good personality, I like his personality a lot. You know a lot about Sonic. Uh, yeah, dude, I learned a lot from you, man. That's your, that's your guy. You that know? is my guy. We talk about him quite a bit. We need an animal. In Sonic, there's Tails, mm -hmm. he's a fox. Yeah. Uh, Knuckles is an echidna. Kind of like an armadillo, kind of like a hedgehog, I don't really know. There's Rouge the bat. Oh. Big the cat, Sally Acorn, I think she's a squirrel of some kind. Do they, do they have a bunny though? Is there a Yes. Bunny? One of the most popular types of furries are hybrids. I'm, I'm talking about fursonas that are maybe like, it's somewhere between a wolf and a dog. It's like a wolfy creature, not strictly a wolf, not strictly a dog, or maybe like something that is akin to a cat and a fox. Any sort of mix, maybe dragon and wolf, like you can get Crazy, more diverse mixtures, dragon, shark, kind of scaly shark, and dog, wolf, dog, shark, I've seen, wolf, shark, like they're, so I think wolves and hybrids kind of um, compete. Blake, what things are scaly? Uh, we're talking about like reptiles, maybe some snakes, uh, alligators. There's a big one. Lizards. Big. Big. Likes gold. Likes gold. Dragon! There we go. Dragon! There we go. Dragon. Uh, These nuts on your face, gotcha. Dude. So we're here we have a very basic interpretation of what a scaly might look like. So when we talk about fursonas, one large category, a very seemingly perhaps you would think, oh, maybe this like doesn't really make sense. Like reptiles, lizards. That doesn't seem like something that people would generally find fondness for. So I'm a big fan of scalies because of that sort of dichotomy between them. We have here a popular depiction of not exactly a fursona, but an anthropological reptile scaly. But what about when they shed, you know, their skin, it's gonna get everywhere. Who's cleaning that? I'm not cleaning that up. Are you cleaning that up? You mean like the lizard, the scales when they shed? Yeah. I think, see, I think that might be a cathartic experience for the two of you. Imagine, you know, it's very difficult. You see these animals in the wild, like snakes having to like rub up us to, to get their old shed skin off, but, but you could help them. And maybe oh. that, that's sort of a bonding experience. Wow. You know, you wow. can get it there and just like. <clears throat> <clears throat> what does that say, Blake? Avian. Avian. Something like this. This might be an example of like a bird fursona. Avian. I feel maybe perhaps a little less common. I don't think I see this one being as popular as I see wolves, dogs, even scalies. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a big bird guy. Yeah, uh, you know, I could see why wolf and dog are the most popular, but birds, it's, it's, it's hard for me to get. I love the fact that they fly. You know, the fact that they can just poop anywhere even on you know, your car or your head if they need be, but um, yeah, I'm not a, bit, not a big bird guy. Birds lay eggs. Do you change your mind now? Uh, this one's pretty straightforward, Blake. Uh, insects, bugs, as they would like to say. Yes, yes. Uh, I see a lot of words being thrown out. I've seen exos, as an exoskeleton, a buggy, Buggies, maybe? I've seen a lot of words thrown out. I'm not really sure. Um, a key example, I think. One example being a moth. I see moths as a very popular form of an insect persona. Um, what you would call exactly a buggy, a bug, essentially. Not as prevalent as wolves. Scalies. I mean, I think I see the avians way more than I see insects. And when I do, I feel it's mostly 
moths. But it's cute at the same time. I think maybe there's something to do about the contrast of how maybe generally insects, you know, mandibles, and <laughs> like maybe they're kind of gross usually, but there's, there's a charm in that sort of contrast and bringing it into a more acute depiction, into a more digestible uh, uh, depiction. So moving on, I know there's, there's a myriad of other uh, specific fursona categories. I want to talk about one that we glossed over in the previous discussion about fursonas, and that, that is one on protogens. Um, most of this information is coming from Know Your Meme. Part organic, part machine. Key features, they are generally anthropomorphic in nature, maybe resembling something akin to a mixture of a raptor dragon-like um, cyborg robotic creature. Let me draw you a depiction of maybe a generic protogen you might see. Okay, so this is a very particular, very specific uh, species of fursona, and it is called the protogen. And again, it is generally depicted as a sort of almost raptor-like silhouette, kind of a mix between maybe something you see like a wolf and, or maybe a scaly. The key thing here are the very obvious characteristics of it being part organic and part machine, perhaps mainly machine. Have you ever seen Robocop? No, no. So Do you know who Robocop is? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever thought, hmm. So I think a lot of us have seen something like this. Kind of reminds me of like a Digimon maybe, but a protogen, pay attention. Again, this comes from Know Your Meme. The primogen, I, I, this is all new to me. I had no idea about any of this. There is a fursona referred to as the primogen, not protogen, the primogen, which is the precursor to the protogen. It is a closed species invented by the fur affinity user known as Malice Risu. Closed species. What does this mean? Nobody else besides the creator is supposedly technically allowed to make variants of this species. They created this and they said, anyone who makes and draws their own protogen is not official. It doesn't count. It's illegal. You can only commission protogens from the source code, purchase them via an auction or something. Reportedly, their auctions of protogen fursonas can go as high as $1,200. Oh wow. Illegal protogens, as in, like, I'm just a random. Uh, person out there and I create when I draw one. Oh, they're technically illegal. It's supposedly looked down upon. The creator does not want these to exist. Of course, people are obviously going to go and do it. It's time to make your fursona. Oh, baby. Pick a species. So, uh, I'm a cat guy. So let's, let's, You're a cat let's guy. stick with cats. Yeah. I okay. like the cats. Let's just go with it. Let's make it a uh, an orange cat. Okay, you want to be an orange cat? Yeah, they just got the best vibes. They they eat a vibes. lot, you know. Love they to eat. eat a lot. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. You know, might okay. be a little, you know, might be a little bit on the bigger side, but that's what okay. are they wearing? What do they look like beyond uh, that? So you know, give them a top hat like a fedora. I want them to look classy. It's got great vibes. You know, we, we got to make vibes. sure the vibes got are the amazing. Vibes. Yeah, I got the vibes. Got the vibes. vibes double on the vibes. Double on the vibes. It's like fedora, jumpsuit, trim claws. Okay. Can we give it like let's let's give it two tails. Two tails. Two tails. Sure. Let's change it up. Sure. You know, give, okay, sure. give it like a cane maybe if you can. We have a sort of large cat, fedora, suit, a cane, two tails, a monocle. So, so likes to eat a lot, he said. Blake, what is the name of your fursona? Uh, we're going we're gonna to name him Sparky. That was uh, an old nickname for me when I was growing up. I used to... Uh, Play with uh, electrical cords for some reason and do, it, it, I was a kid, all right? So my parents would call me Sparky. There we have it. That is Blake's fursona, Sparky. My fursona. Oh yeah. Let's get into it. So my fursona is a protogen. 